Hello everyone, in this video I'll be focusing on the macro level tips and workflows that I use consistently across all of my projects, rather than delving into finer micro level details which I'll cover in separate videos, these are more fundamental techniques that I apply to every project I undertake. So let's dive right in and I'll walk you through that. When working with Photoshop I have two rules I always start every document out with. And that is one folder structure and two working non-destructively. Folder structure is pretty obvious, but a lot of people don't do it. So if you go up here, you'll see that I have my everything I need separated into folders and each folder has uppercase letters. And that's important because what I can do in that case is select our tool. And what I can do is I can right click here and you can see that these capital letters, I know they're folders and I know the lowercase isn't. So I can select this, grab my levels and I can start making changes. Here, make it a bit darker. I can do it over here and you see I have foliage and I have glass. So I can go to my curves and my foliage and I can start making changes here, make it a bit darker. And just like that, we have our folder structure and you should do that for everything. You can also make another folder here for entourage and people. And then you have people walking, people cycling and so on. Just organize so if you have to hand this work off to someone, they can understand it. The next thing is working non-destructively. So if I turn off my elements here, my edits, sorry, and what you not want to do is say if your client is saying, I want this a bit brighter. You don't want to select your layer here and go into image adjustments, say, and it's like, okay, I want to make this brighter. I'm going to switch this up and I'm going to click okay. And it's like, perfect. You send it off to the client and they like it. But then the very next day they're like, actually, I don't like that. Can you please change it back? While you've closed the document, you saved it. You put those settings in straight away into the document. So there isn't any going back. Yes, you could go into image adjustments, brightness and try and bring this back down, but you're not going to be sure about going back exactly to what you are. So what you want to do in that case, if I undo, you'd want to do an adjustment layer here, brightness, and then change it this way. And that's a non-destructive workflow. So then they're like, oh, actually, I don't like that anymore. I can switch it off and on. Or they're saying, actually, that's too much. Bring it back down and we can switch it on and off still without destroying our original image. So keep that in mind when you're working, make sure you work non-destructively. Working in architecture, you'll be fighting perspective a lot. So save yourself the trouble and use smart objects. Not only does it make it easy to replace textures later on, it also lets you edit them more easily. So for example, let's say I wanted to change the wallpaper here. I wanted to add on wallpaper. Well, I have a folder set up here and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into my objects here, the rectangle tool, and I'm gonna draw on roughly the size I want. I'm gonna hold down shift because I wanna keep it a perfect square. Go like that and then we have our object. Now I have a mask in here which I'm going to disable by hitting shift, shift left click and we just have our object. So here we are. Now the first thing I'm going to do is before I make any changes in the transforms, I'm going to right click here and I'm going to say convert to smart object. Click that and then we can start changing the shape of this. Something like this and push that up so the perspective lines make sense. So I'm going to commit to that. Then I'm going to double click this and now we have our object. Now I have a wallpaper here, which I'm going to add into this object. So if I go here, I can click and drag this, pop it in here and it's way too big. So we need to scale it down. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to snap this up here and I'm going to hit control S and this is going to update in here. Now what we need to do is we might need to fix the perspective a tiny bit, but that's fine. We can go in here and hit skew and push this up a bit and we get something like that. Maybe a bit down. And you might be saying, well, it doesn't look like it matches. I'm going to hit shift click. So now it matches a bit better. We're also going to change the mode and I'm going to change something to like soft light or maybe even subtract. And just like that, you've completely changed the whole look here on this wall. Now the most powerful thing about this smart object is that we can change the look very quickly. So if we go out of full screen here, I have my layer here, but now I have another layer I've added on top. So imagine we want a completely different look. I'm going to hit control S to save this. And now all of a sudden we have a damaged wall look and say you want to put this to like multiply. And then just like that straight away, we have a completely different look 
and you can add this onto the other wall and you can add damage you can add wear and tear at the bottom so easily we can also add a mask to this object hit b and i'm just gonna do something very quickly and we can just start brushing this out bring down the hardness down and say oh i only want it at the the bottom of the wall and just like that you can brush it out and then we just have it at the bottom you can do a gradient instead and push that down like that and you can add a bit of gradient but again it's up to you this is just showing you the power of masks and how you can just use this and the power of smart objects to create a completely different look in a matter of seconds it's essential to streamline your photoshop workflow and relying solely on the mouse can be counterproductive many essential functions can be accessed quickly through the keyboard shortcuts so the first ones, for example, that come to my head are duplicating. So if I have this object, I can hit Control J and it'll duplicate that over and over. But let's say I have these edits done and I need to condense all these into one. I, I can select all these and hit Control E and that's going to merge them. But one I like even better is Control Shift Alt and E, which will duplicate all visible. So if I do that, you'll see now I have this top layer, which is everything below it merged and created new. Other parts of the interface you need to know is along the toolbar. So V for move tool, sorry, the select tool. Then you have the M for marquee. You have B for brush, E for eraser. You can see it all makes sense. S for stamp tool. You can see it's all switching. And it's essential to learn these because it just makes your workflow so much easier. Like again, I can clarify, you can always go here and go alt click to do the clipping mask, but even better yet, you can hit control alt and G and that'll do that straight away. You can also move files up and down, control and brackets, moving these layers. There's so many things you can do from the keyboard that just makes it work faster and you can concentrate on your image. And then finally, you can make your own shortcuts if you want. You can go into edit, keyboard shortcuts, click that, and in here you can change everything. The only thing I've really changed in here is I have layer and all the way down here, I have, keep going down, and I have here, update all modified content to control Q. Basically when you can link files to Photoshop, I like it in control Q to update it, but it's absolutely up to you. You can change it to whatever you want. The main thing is learn the shortcuts to use. Go through Photoshop, just start learning. And the best way to learn is just by doing project after project. In your workflow, you'll often find yourself repeating similar tasks for different projects. To save time and streamline your work, I recommend creating actions. So for example, I just quickly created this one called folder structure, which is something you probably always want to do. So you have this original file and then I'm going to click this and you can see straight away it has created all these folders. But how did I do that? Well, it's incredibly easy. So I'm just going to delete this layer, these layers, and I'm going to show you how it's done. So first of all, let's create a new one and I'm going to call this folder structure two. Click record and right now any action you do is going to be recorded. And actually I want to move this down. So now once you've done that, any action you do is going to be recorded by Photoshop. So anything you do, control Z, any of the shortcuts. So the very first thing is I'm going to create folder. I'm going to rename this IDs, enter, create another folder. And as you can see, this is happening over here. Call this elements and then another folder. I'm going to call this edits. Okay, and then I'm going to hit stop. And that's what you should do as well. So what I'm showing here is, okay, that worked. Let's see if I run the action now, does it work? So I'm going to go back to Folder Structure 2, hit play, and you can see they pop up. The reason you should test that early is you don't want to go through a bunch of stuff and then realize halfway through that you messed up or it doesn't work correctly. So I'm happy there, and I can go down to the bottom one and then continue. I can hit record, and now it's recording from this bottom layer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my IDs. You can see, select layer IDs, right click, red, select elements, right click, orange, edits, right click, and change this to blue. Then I'm happy with that. Again, I'm going to hit stop, delete these, and just double check that it works correctly. Make sure I'm at the top of this, hit play, and there you go. So now I'm going to go down to my bottom one, hit record again, select IDs, control bracket key, and I'm going to start moving this up. Then I'm going to select my edits, and I'm going to move this down, down. And then I'm going to hit stop. So now delete these, go to the top of my action, collapse this now, folder structure two and hit play. And just like that, you have your folder structure. 
So you can do this with many other things. I've seen people use it for blurs, some of your smart tools you could use it for, but it just saves work. I would use it for like creating folders and just stuff at the beginning to speed up your workflow so you can concentrate on your creativity and what you're designing. The line of the concept of working non-destructively, employing masks is pretty much essential. When you use the eraser tool, you're working in a destructive manner in most cases. However, by utilizing masks, you can erase and restore elements more flexibly and without permanently altering your image. So in line with that, I'm going to show you how this image can be put into our glass and show a bit more imperfection and smudges on this. So in here in edits, I already have some of my folders set up and this is how I set up all my projects. So in here I have the glass. So if I alt like this, you can see that's just glass. So I'm going to click and drag this in, pop that on top and you can see this is only affecting where the glass is. But obviously we want to change this a bit. First things first, let's change the mode to something like screen so we get those kind of smudges. I'm also going to go into here and go filter, blur and let's go Gaussian blur and we're going to start pushing this up so it has that kind of blurred effect it's not too strong click OK but obviously again this is still too much so on top of this I'm going to add another mask I'm going to go control I to invert it so it's completely disappeared hit B so in our brush tool and make sure we're painting in white so that means we can start painting back in here and say I just want it in these corners a bit where it's nice and bright and maybe get rid of here but again, we're not working destructively. This is still the full image. It's just the mask. Now, obviously, this is a bit too strong. So you can go into the opacity and we can start bringing this down. So it's very subtle. We don't want this to be too much. So again, if I switch this on and off, we can just see a small bit of imperfection on that glass. And that's how you use masks. They're really good. They're really effective. And they make sure that you can always revert and go back to your work. One extra tip I'm going to give, which is just a tiny bit extra, is if I go in here, one thing I like to do is I link files. This is just a cat. This is a silly cat. I'm going to link here and double click. Now you'll see that I have a link symbol here beside my image. And the way I did that, if I delete it and go back, you'll see that I can alt click this and drag. And then if I submit that, I have this linked image. And that basically means I can scale this down, this little cat, him over here say he's on the table he's probably a bit small but we're not worried too much about that but now it's similar to smart objects but say you're rendering something and then it changes Photoshop should update it but in this case I'm just going to open it up like this I have another cat in here change it save it and then that will update in here so that's one added thing you can do. I mostly do that with renders I bring in from 3ds Max. And when I render in 3ds Max, it will automatically update in Photoshop without me having to worry about it. So that's just one extra tip you might want to get. While there are many other helpful tips I could share, I focus on the key ones in this video, as I believe it's more valuable to provide a strong foundation rather than overwhelming you with numerous smaller tips. As you work on your projects, you'll likely discover additional techniques that suit your specific needs. If you're interested in learning more about Photoshop or have any specific questions, please feel free to reach out. I'm here to help and support your creative journey.